Hi, I'm Jeff Bartles, Infrastructure Technical Specialist at Autodesk, and today we're going to be looking at a continuation of the series called Civil 3D and AutoCAD Tips, Tricks, and Industry Shortcuts. In this session, we'll be exploring several time-saving shortcuts associated with Civil 3D and AutoCAD. These shortcuts are going to be focused into three major categories, interface, helpful tools, and workflows. Throughout the session, I'm going to be using a rapid-fire approach to the material so we can cover as many concepts as possible. This recording is going to be focused on the helpful tools, tips, and shortcuts, and it represents part two of the overall session. I have just launched Civil 3D 2016, and I'd like to start by opening a couple drawings. I'll come up to the quick access toolbar and I'll launch the open command, and I'm going to select earthwork. I'll hold my shift key and select the points drawing, and then I'll come down and click open. Once these two drawings are open in the interface, I'd like to switch to the points drawing. I'll do that by selecting the file tab. This drawing contains a large collection of Kogo points that represent cross sections of an existing rural intersection. After looking at these points, I might ask, what's the next available point number? If I was to go out in the field and collect additional data, what would be the next number I could use? To find that, I can come down to the command line and type list available point numbers. When I launch that command, we can see them right here. 219 is available, as well as 244 up through the maximum. I can also go the other way. What if I want to find out what numbers are used? I'll type list used point numbers. When I launch the command, we can see the used point numbers right here. These two options can be very helpful when managing your Kogo data. Let's switch to the other drawing. We'll take a look at another tool. In this file, I have a pair of surfaces. This one represents a proposed detention basin. It's called PRTP. And this surface represents the existing ground. It's called EXTP. Maybe I'd like to do a quick earthwork calculation of this basin. Normally, when we calculate earthwork, we have to create a tin volume surface to hold the data. But in this case, I just want to get some quick and dirty numbers. I can do that by launching the command report surface volume. This brings up Civil 3D's classic volume tool. From here, I can click to make a new comparison. I can select my base surface in my comparison surface, and that's it. There's my earthwork calculation right there. I'm going to click the green check to close the panorama. Let's pan this over. We'll zoom in on this detail. I'm going to start by selecting one of these linear dimensions, and I'll right-click. Here in the menu, there's an option called Select Similar. We've had this for a while. If I choose Select Similar, it will select all of the linear dimensions. Let me press Escape. When the Select Similar command came out, there was another command that went along with it, just as helpful, but wasn't quite as popular at the time. Let me select this dimension again, and I'll right-click. It's right here, Add Selected. Probably not the best name. This should be called Create Similar. This allows me to create a new object just like the one that I selected. Now, before I create a new dimension, let me press Escape. I'm going to change my annotation scale here. There we go. Let's zoom in on this dimension. I'll select it, right-click. I'll choose Add Selected. And I would like to create a dimension right here. This dimension is on the same layer, using the same dimension style, even if those settings aren't current at the time. Let me pan this over, and I'm going to create a rectangle. I'd like to hatch it using the same pattern as we're using the detail. Let me select the pattern. I'll right-click, Add Selected. I will then click inside the shape, and I'll press Enter. Let's make a few geometric changes. I'm going to click the outer polyline, and then I will hover over this grip and I'll choose Convert to Arc. Maybe we'll pull this out into an arc. I'll hover over this grip and we'll add a vertex. And maybe we can add a vertex here as well. Let me press Escape. Here's another interesting tool. I'm going to draw a line across this hatch. Hatch is trimmable. I'll launch the Trim command. I'll select my line and press Enter. And then I can trim off this area of the hatch. Now that I've trimmed the hatch, it is dynamic to this line segment. You just want to make sure you don't drag the line off the object. Let me press delete to get rid of that. So now, what if I wanted this hatch to refill this object? Well, there's a tool for that. Let me select the hatch. I'll right click and I'll choose set boundary. I will then select my boundary and I'll press enter. Maybe you've had an object hatched like a parking lot or something similar and somebody accidentally deleted the boundary. Not a problem, we can get the boundary back. So long as you have the hatch, you can right-click and choose Generate Boundary. This will create a new boundary outline on the current layer. I'm sure you've probably used the Undo command before. 
We can do that by clicking the icon here in the interface. Each time you click undo, it backs up one step. Maybe you've used the menu. This allows us to back up several steps. Let me show you another option. I'm going to press escape to close that. Undo is a full-blown command. If I type undo and press enter, we can see several options down here at the command line. I'm going to choose the mark option. This allows me to place a mark in the drawing. Not a physical mark, kind of a programming mark. This allows me to explore a different design alternative. If I don't like the way things are going, I can undo back to this mark. Let's try it. I'm going to make some changes. I'll just select this geometry and I'll delete it. And then maybe I can draw a polyline here. We'll create some geometry. Maybe I can launch my copy command and we can copy that around. Let's back up. Maybe I can rotate some of this stuff. And then maybe we can mirror. So this represents my design alternative. Now, I'm not happy with it. Let's go back to the way things were. I'm going to relaunch Undo. I'll right click and go to Recent Input. I'll find Undo from the menu here. And I'll come down and choose Back. When I choose Back, it goes back to my previous mark. I'm going to press Spacebar to go back into the Undo command. And let's choose Back again. Now there's no mark to go to. If you do that, it will back you up to the point where you opened the drawing. We can see right here, this will undo everything. Let me press Enter to do that, and I'm back where I started. I'm going to zoom in. We'll take a look at this geometry. Let's talk about the geometric calculator. Anytime AutoCAD or Civil 3D is asking for a value, you can enter an expression. For instance, I'd like to offset this line. I'm going to choose Offset. What's my distance? I don't know what the actual distance is, but I can put in an expression. So for my distance, I'm going to type apostrophe C-A-L. I'll press Enter. This allows me to bring up a transparent calculator. For expression, I'll type 6 plus 6. Enter. You can see the value down here at the command line. It was applied to the command. So now I can just click this line and offset it over. I'll press Escape when I'm done. Let's press the Enter key to go back into the offset command. Maybe I'd like to create a center line here. What's my distance? Apostrophe C-A-L. Expression, 12 divided by 2. Enter. I'll select my line and I'll offset it over. Let's try something else. I'll select these lines and I'll press delete to remove them. Maybe I'd like to offset this line the same distance as these two lines are apart. There's a function for that. Let me launch offset. What's my distance? Apostrophe C-A-L. What's my expression? D-E-E -E stands for distance between two endpoints. You can see Civil 3D brings up my pick box. I can click one endpoint and the other. No running object snap necessary there. We can see the value right here. Doesn't get any more accurate than that. I can now select this line and offset it over. We can even include the function in an expression. So let's launch offset again. Offset distance, apostrophe C-A-L, expression, D-E-E -E divided by 2. In this case, I can click down here, this endpoint, this one. Click this line and offset it over. Let's say I'd like to fill it, these two lines, using the same radius as this circle. Now, who knows what this radius is? Could be anything. There's a function for that. I'm going to launch the fill it command this time, and I'll come down and choose radius. What's my radius? Apostrophe C-A-L, expression, R-A-D. I'll press enter. When you use the rad function, you can select a circle, arc, or polyline segment to get the radius. I'll choose this arc. We can see the radius right there. I can now click this line and this line. We can even include rad in an expression. Maybe I'd like to fill it these two lines with a radius that would be an offset from this one. Let's launch fill it. I'll choose radius. What's the radius? Apostrophe C-A-L. Expression, rad, plus D-E-E. -E. I will then select my circle. I'll pick my two endpoints. I'll then click my two lines to fill it them. Let me pan this over and I'm going to create some geometry. Let me just make a quick rectangle here and then we'll create a polygon. Maybe three sides. I'll pick, inscribe, we'll just pull that out. So I've got a rectangle and a triangle. I'd like to draw a circle at the center of this object. Let me launch the circle command. Now, I can, if I mean if I wanted to, I could shift right click and say mid between two points. I could use that object snap and then just grab these two points. I could do that. Let me press escape. Let me show you something else just so you can get an idea of how the geometric calculator works. In this case, Civil 3D is asking for a coordinate. I'm going to type apostrophe C-A-L and then I'll enter an expression. Open bracket, end plus end, and I want to take that quantity divided by two. We can use object snaps in our expressions. Let me press enter. I will then click my two endpoints. It adds those coordinates together and divides by two to find the center of that object. Let's go a little further. I'm going to press the spacebar to go back into the command. Let's find the center of that triangle. 
I'll type apostrophe C-A-L. What's my expression? End plus end plus end. Take that value divided by 3. I can then click this end and this end and this end to find that center. Now, let me select this and I'll press delete. Since I'm using 2016, there is a new object snap called geometric center. So if I wanted to, since I'm using the latest version, I could say what's the center point? I could type GCE for geometric center point. I could then select a closed shape to find the center. Let me back up. I'm going to create a polyline here. Maybe I'd like to draw a circle five feet from the end of this line. We don't have an object snap for that, but I can find it using the calculator. Let me launch the circle command. What's my center point? Apostrophe C-A-L. What's my expression? PLD, open bracket, end, comma, end, comma, five. PLD, point line distance. What two object snaps do you want to pick? And then how far do you want to go from the first object snap? Let me press enter. I'll click my two endpoints. And that circle is five units from the end of that line. Let me select that and I'll press delete. What if I wanted to create a circle 25% of the distance along this line? I'll launch the circle command, apostrophe C-A-L, expression, P-L-T, end, comma, end, comma, 0.25. Point line percentage, what two object snaps do you want to click, and then what percentage do you want to use? Let me press enter. I will then click these two points, and the circle is 25% of the distance along that overall length. Just think of how quick you can draft if you create macros from some of these expressions. Let's pan this over. We'll look at one more. I'm going to change my annotation scale here, and we'll create a quick copy. Let me copy this line, turn the running object snaps back on from the endpoint here to the endpoint here. Maybe I'd like to rotate these two objects around the center of the circle, and I'd like to rotate them the same angle that's defined by these two line segments. We can do that. Let me launch Rotate. I'll select the objects I want to rotate. Press Enter. Base point. I'll rotate them around the center of the circle. And now how far do I want to rotate them? Apostrophe C-A-L, expression, A-N-G, end, comma, end, comma, end. So I want to calculate an angle. What three object snaps do I want to click? And then the first one represents the apex. Let me press Enter. I'll click the apex, and then I'll pick these two points to define the angle. And I've got my rotation. Real quick, we can verify that. We can use the new dimension tool. Let me click these two lines. That's 63.54. Let me click these two lines. 63.54. You will find the calculator in many places. For instance, if I press Control-8, we have a calculator here. It has several of the functions that we saw earlier, as well as the numeric keypad. We can convert units here as well. Everything that we do here, we can apply to the command line. Let me close this. You will also find the calculator in the Properties palette. If I select this circle, for instance, go over to Properties, come down here, every one of these numeric values. When I click in here, we'll see that we have access to a calculator. I could click this and say, you know what, the radius of that is 11.8279. I'd like to make that divided by 3. And I'll press Enter, and then I'll click Apply to apply it to my circle. If you like reverse Polish notation, we can type RPNCALC. This brings up a calculator just for you. You can go through and solve your expressions, and then you can use this icon in the upper left corner to paste the value to the command line. Let's look at one more tool. In a production environment, there may be times where you open a drawing and it comes up read-only, and then you may wonder who's in that file. There's a nice tool called Who Has. Who Has operates just like the open command. When I launch this, it takes me to the Select Drawing dialog box. From here, I can select a file. Now, I happen to be in the points drawing. Let me select that and I'll click open. As you can see, it'll give me the login name and the computer name, and it'll tell me how long that person's been in the file. Now, this is kind of anticlimactic because I'm actually in the drawing, but if this was a production environment, I would know exactly who I need to go to to get access to the file. If you found this content helpful, please rate it by clicking the thumbs up icon. This will help other AKN users identify valuable content. On behalf of Autodesk, this is Jeff Bartles saying thank you for watching.